Ukrainian drone pilots kill 40 Russians a day, the Times. To repel the Russian invasion in the northern part of the Kharkiv region, the Ukrainian armed forces urgently deployed additional reserves. Among others, the Peaky Blinders Special Unit of the National Guard, which specializes in unmanned aircraft, was sent to protect the second largest city in Ukraine. A correspondent for the British The Times spent a day on the front line with Ukrainian fighters and spoke about what he saw. There is a direct road to Kharkov through the village of Lipsy. It is this area, along with other units, that the Peaky Blinders protect. The village has already been destroyed by Russian artillery and bombs. There is not a single surviving house left in it. Flying the village in pickup trucks, the Peaky Blinders arrive at a hidden position from where they will conduct their battle with the invaders. The main weapon of this special forces unit is drones. Reconnaissance. Kamikaze with drops. As soon as they arrive at the position, the drone pilots heard the crackle of machine guns nearby. Quickly raising drones into the sky, the Peaky Blinders found the battlefield, three Ukrainian soldiers kneeling in the grass fort with a platoon of Russian soldiers. The drone pilots immediately rushed to the aid of their own. The first grenade they threw lightly wounded one Russian and sent others scurrying for cover, thwarting their assault on Ukrainian infantry positions. It's the start of an all-day game of hide-and-seek where the stakes are life and death. Laconic commands are shouted before each drone launch. Misses, they curse. Hits are celebrated with fist blows, high fives and compliments, writes the Times correspondent. One Russian soldier tries to escape, throwing first his backpack and then his helmet as he runs. The Kozirkov drones pursue him for more than a kilometer to the ravine where the occupier gets tired and tries to hide in a grove where other Russians are already sitting. The Ukrainians bomb them until no one there can move. Another man was spotted outdoors by an FPV drone which tore his head clean off. There is no sympathy for the soldiers who invaded their land. Only hatred, writes the Times. The elimination of each invader is recorded on video and then turned into marketing content for volunteer fundraising for new drones. According to the calculations of a British correspondent, the Peaky Blinders killed or seriously wounded about 40 Russian soldiers during one combat outing. However, more Russians continue to arrive, crawling forward past their dead comrades. Ukraine still holds Lipsy, but the battle for Kharkov is just beginning. The Times notes. Ukraine asks US to help locate targets in Russia, the New York Times. Kiev has urged Washington to provide intelligence on targets on Russian soil. As the Ukrainian armed forces lose ground on the battlefield, the New York Times reported saying US administration officials have begun to review the request. The Russian offensive in Kharkov region was facilitated by the U.S. restrictions, which are handcuffing the Ukrainian war effort, Kiev's delegation told Congress, according to news website Politico. Intelligence from the U.S. and other allies on military targets on Russian soil would allow Ukraine to better plot approach routes for its drones and missiles, the newspaper said. With detailed terrain mapping, it would allow them to fly low and avoid radar detection, increasing their effectiveness. While Kiev already has access to commercial satellite imaging data, US intelligence would provide more detailed and timely information, they wrote. General Charles Brown, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, confirmed that Kiev has been seeking to ramp up strikes inside Russia. The Ukrainians have been asking us for help to be able to strike into Russia, the US general told reporters while flying to Brussels for NATO meetings. State Secretary Antony Blinken stated that the US has left it up to Ukraine whether or not it uses US-supplied armaments to attack Russian territories. We have not encouraged or enabled strikes outside of Ukraine, but ultimately Ukraine has to make decisions for itself about how it's going to conduct this war, he told reporters in Kiev. In early May, British Foreign Secretary David Cameron said Kiev had the right to use UK-provided weaponry for cross-border strikes on Russian targets. Moscow condemned the remarks and summoned London's ambassador. Any use of British weapons against Russian territory could prompt Moscow to strike any British military facilities and equipment on the territory of Ukraine and beyond, the Russian Foreign Ministry warned. Shipments of long-range missiles to Kiev may expand buffer zone toward Poland. Medvedev. The required width of buffer zone in Ukraine to protect Russia's territory may reach as far as the Polish border if the West sends Kiev long-range weapons, Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev wrote on his Telegram channel. Medvedev recalled President Vladimir Putin's words about the need to create a buffer zone inside which it will be impossible for the neo-Nazi regime to hit objects on Russian territory. 
Of course, including all the lands that have returned to our country, Medvedev explained. Once the Kiev regime uses Storm Shadow, Scalp EG missiles with a range of at least 550 kilometers, when the distance between Belgorod and Kiev is 429 kilometers, practically the entire central and most of the western parts of Ukraine fall within this sanitary zone, Medvedev said. In other words, there must be Russia everywhere. 550 kilometers plus 70 to 100 more to be sure. Otherwise, the security of our cities and villages cannot be ensured. If it goes on like this, the guarantee guaranteed sanitary zone will be somewhere at the border with Poland or even inside Poland, the deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council suggested. All the same, the moronic NATO strategists sincerely want almost the whole of Ukraine to be under Russia's control, Medvedev added. Russian President Vladimir Putin said during a visit to China that Moscow's offensive in Ukraine's northeastern Kharkiv region aims to create a buffer zone, but that there are no plans to capture the city. The remarks were Putin's first on the offensive launched on May the 10th, which opened a new front and displaced thousands of Ukrainians within days. Ukrainian troops are fighting to halt Russian advances in the Kharkiv region that began late last week. In an effort to increase troop numbers, President Volodymyr Zelensky signed two laws allowing prisoners to join the army and increasing fines for draft dodgers fivefold. The controversial mobilization law goes into effect. Russia enlisted prisoners early on in the war and personnel shortages compelled the new measures. The legislation allows for parole from serving a sentence and further enlistment for military service for a specific period for some people charged with criminal offences. It doesn't extend to those convicted of crimes against Ukraine's national security.